Okie doke, welcome back. Let's set up another enemy type. So, uh, this is my second time recording, so I already got some folders set up. But all I've done now is I've got, in the animals folder, I've got one for my wolf. So I just right click, new folder, wolf, right click, new folder, rabbit. Uh, I'm going to be using a rabbit from the animal pack ultra, uh, but I, I thought it was a free pack. But in the animal variety pack, there is this pig that you can use. If you want to follow along with free stuff, I'm going to be using this rabbit. But inside the enemies folder, I'm just going to right click. Create a child blueprint, and this will be my rabbit underscore BP. Panic sets in every time. Did I click record? Yes. I don't want to do a bunch of stuff and then realize, ah, crap, I forgot. All right, so my rabbit BP is going to go inside my rabbit folder. Now before I get out of here, I'm going to go into my behavior mode, because we're going to make this enemy flee, so we need a new behavior. So flee. Save that. And then now we got a rabbit over here, so I'm going to go inside the base enemy BP. I could not find flee. Yeah. So let's get rid of you. Let's undo everything I did in the last round. I should have done this before. Just boom right there. All right, so that should be back to basics. All right. All right, so what we want to do is we want to add those booleans I just deleted. So for this one, he's going to be timid, question mark. And you saw the other one, which was scared. I guess I could have just told you, make him. Um, let's just make it together so he can be timid, and once he is, he'll be scared. So on the C pawn... Once he's passive, we want to do a branch check to see if he's also timid. If he is timid, then we want to call some functions. If he's not, then we want to just continue doing his little passive thing. But what we want to do is we want to create a custom event called flee. It didn't take, did it? No. All right. Flee. So it'll try to run away from our player. Now, if it is timid, then we want to set his behavior mode to flee. We want to set that he is now scared. So we'll drag that out and set true. We can call the behavior unit like that. And then the behavior unit up here will now have this since we updated the behavior mode. And we'll just call our flee function. So from flee, what we want to do is we want to find out where the player is at and then make the rabbit run away from that point. So what we can do is right here, first thing we want to do is we want to find out, make sure the rabbit is not dead. So is he dead? If not, then continue. So if not dead, let's get actor location. And that will be the self. And then let's get a reference to the player character. And we will get that actor location because what we want to do is we want to compare them and then draw a line between them. So we will find the look at rotation between the two of them. And then from here, let's get that forward vector. So it basically takes the point between here and here and draws a line from the bunny to the player. And then we can tell which direction that line is being pointed in by getting its forward vector. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. So what we want to do here is we want to multiply that forward vector. Now if you're using Unreal Engine 4, you want to do a multiply times float. If you're using Unreal Engine 5, you just want to right click and convert that pin to a float. And we are going to get negative 500. So if this is drawing a line to, from the bunny to the player in a forward direction, this will take that point and go behind the rabbit. So we're getting negative 500 behind it. Now let's take that rabbit's location and add this amount to it. So then we want to do an AI move to. So if they're not dead, we'll hook the move to up to here. For the pawn, we will set it as a self-reference. 
and now we do want to kind of move this down a little bit because we're going to have to break the vector for the rabbit break the actor location of the vector for the rabbit and then the little mathematical one that we set up so for the destination let's make a vector because we want the z to be where our rabbit is currently at on the z-axis so it's not trying to like float up into the air or anything like that and then from the x and the y of the mathematical one so it can say get that point and move to it and now at the very end on success or fail let's just flee again now it's very important to be adding this math to the bunny's location and then doing all this otherwise it'll get just a fixed point and then try to go to that point now one more thing that we need to do is over here on our roam and patrol points let's move both of these branches a little bit further and we're gonna add in between both of them to see if our bunny is scared and if it's not then we move right into our other stuff but if it is, then we call our flee function. Same thing up here. Add a branch after the delay. You're not scared. You move on. You are scared. You flee. Now right over here at the flee function, just as a backup, let's set the behavior mode to flee. That way, in case it's calling it from over here, it'll go back to fleeing. And right here, scared is set to true. All right, so let's go into the bunny rabbit. Now for the rabbit, I'm gonna set that he is timid and passive. It's chase speed 500, walk speed 125, chase range three, oh, not 30,000, 3,000. None of the other stuff really matters at this particular moment, but I am going to update his mesh. I'm going to be using this wild rabbit, like I said, from the the pack that I thought was free, but it's actually $4.99. It's not a bad pack; it comes with a lot of animals. Uh, but I'm going to be set, I'm going to be using this adorable little thing. But I am going to update the capsule component. So first, I'm going to set the radius to 20, and then the half height to 20, because the half height cannot be smaller than the radius. So even if I tried to set it to like 10 now, it just goes back to 20. I can set it as big as I want, which I wouldn't want that, but just 20 and 20. And then the way you can position the mesh inside of this is to just, its half height was 20, so its Z location needs to be negative 20. And then you'll see it just lines up just right there. All right, and it is set to... It is set to passive. It has a chase and a walk. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this enemy spawner. And for the enemies to spawn, I'm just going to tell it to spawn some rabbits. And then check for some rabbits. Spawn him a rabbit. It sees me and it's taking off. And he's running off into the sunset. Goodbye, Webbit. Did you spawn another one? Yeah, you did. Now they're not moving. Let us see why that might be. See the rabbit. Chase speed, walk speed, chase range. Timid. Maybe I gotta give it health to run around. 
Yeah, there he goes. I don't know why that was a thing, but apparently if his health is low, he will not run. But, yeah, he sees me. He's running away from me. Now, the one thing about the rabbit, you don't want him to just run in a direct straight line away from you. Because it's not very realistic. What we can do is on our flea function, instead of just getting that direct point, we can move this a little bit and then we can get random reachable point in radius using this as the origin and then the radius being like 500 or so and then setting that up like that well he's taking off I bet I know why. So yeah, now he's kind of running a little zigzaggy. A little bit more like a rabbit would. So I, I know what the problem is with the enemy spawning. Here where we're doing the line trace. Nope, nope, nope. It's in the spawner. So in the enemy spawner here where we're doing the line trace. Here where we're doing the line trace. <laughs> Let's, uh, from the actor location, let's subtract about 100. And then for the rabbit, we want to set it, let's just set this to like 45. Now he's spawning into the ground, and you know, he's spawning on the ground. Let's see, let me get out of this radius. I'm still in the radius. It's spawning a little bit above. So it's not... There it is. It's because it was spawning above the nav mesh. And so it just takes a little bit of tweaking. It's because the bunny was so small. That it's spawning a little bit above that navigational mesh. Let me see what happens if I spawn a knight now though, because I'm curious. Let's see, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. So he's spawning on the ground. Bunny's spawning on the ground. They're just not moving. Why ain't you moving, my guy? My friend. My, my buddy. My bunny buddy. It's gotta be something to do with this. So let me take a look real quick at my other spawner. Let's see. Minus 100, minus 500, plus 90. And the rabbit spawns fine in here. In fact, let me just double check it real quick because now it's got me concerned. Let's see. Spawn zone, spawn zone. Rabbit. They're even falling in and doing fine. Well, they might have seen me. That might have been what set them off. Now he's hopping around. Look at him. What I did notice... Um, 
Because this is only set to 500 in the other one. So let's try that. And then I'm going to do plus 90 like I had on the other one. And then there's the guy. There's the rabbit. Hey, she's taking off. Guy, 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 guy. Rabbit. Just staying still. What might be the difference between my rabbits? 1.2. How big is my other rabbit? Rabbit, 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 rabbit. One point five, could that be a difference? So let me try something real quick. I'm gonna set the mesh size to one point five. What is its capsule then? Wonder if that might also be a difference. Forty and forty. Quite possibly. So instead of twenty and twenty on here, I'm gonna set it to forty and forty, which means I'm gonna set this to negative forty. And now let's see. Night, night. Okay, I don't need any nights. Get out of here. I just want me some rabbits. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. They're all staying complete. They're almost all staying completely still. Now they're moving. What are they? Are they hitting each other? Hmm. Well, let's do plus 45 because it was working for the other one. There's something about that spot right there that it's just not one to... If they spawn there, they don't want to move. But for the most part, it seems to be working f seemingly fine except for that one spot. But they're all running away, so that's the important part. So if you do have an issue to where they're spawning but not spawning or not moving at the same time, uh, just let me know. I'm thinking that that might just be some kind of glitch with my particular landscape. It's probably be probably something to do with these or something like I don't know. But if you do have that issue, let me know and we'll address it. Uh, but I'm gonna just gonna at this point assume it's just some. Uh, glitch with this setup so all right but that's it for your flea and rabbits or pigs or whatever you're using bye bunny